Algebra 1, Common Core, Unit 9, Section 8, Geometric Sequences. In the previous video, 9.7, we discussed the difference between an arithmetic sequence and a geometric sequence because we've really been talking about this already. It's pretty much the difference between a linear function and an exponential function. It's not quite as simple as that, but that's really the best way to think about it, uh, where a linear sequence, like an arithmetic sequence, has a plus or minus pattern to it. Like in this example here, it's a plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, and in a geometric sequence has a multiplication pattern to it, like a times 2, times 2, times 2. And in the last video, we focused mainly on the arithmetic sequences. So now let's talk more about the geometric sequences. And so the geometric, as we've been saying, are kind of like a exponential sequence. You know, so you're looking for a multiplication pattern. For the arithmetic, in the previous video, we had a constant difference. Well, here we have a constant ratio. So for the arithmetic sequences, we were saying like D equals 3 when we saw a plus 3, plus 3, plus 3 pattern. But here we're going to, instead of a D, have an R. Uh, but we still have a lot of the other same notations where we have N and A sub N and stuff like that. Um, A sub 1, all that is still the same. So anyways, looking at this example here, we see 3, 6, 12, 24. This is a geometric sequence with a common ratio of 2 because it's a times 2 pattern. Times 2, times 2. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. And if you remember back to the, uh, the previous video, the constant difference, you could figure out that by doing any term minus the one before it, if it wasn't obvious, and a lot of times it was. Well, here I think the times 2 is pretty clear, but if you can't tell, you could do any term divided by the one before it. That'll get you the the ratio. So uh, just like in the last video, same kind of format here, we're given a couple of sequences and we want to know, is it geometric? And if it is, what's the ratio? So looking at our first example, 1, 3, 9, 27, what is the pattern here? You know, you could kind of test the geometric by saying, right, well, 1 times 3 is 3. Does that pattern continue? Times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. So yes, this is a geometric sequence and the ratio is 3. Like I said, if you couldn't tell what that ratio was, you could take any term like 27 and divide it by the one before it. 27 divided by 9 is 3. And see if that's true for the rest of them. How about 2, 4, 6, 8? I think pretty quickly we could say this is no. This would be an arithmetic sequence with a constant difference of 2. It's a plus 2 pattern, not a multiplication pattern. And how about this last one? 24, 12, 6, well, it's not arithmetic because this would be minus 12, and that's not minus 12, that's not minus 12. The answer here is yes, this is geometric. And just like with the arithmetic, sometimes it was a plus pattern, and sometimes it was a minus pattern. Well, for geometric, sometimes it's a multiplication pattern, sometimes you see it more as a division pattern, which really is multiplication, right? So you want to think of this, like looking at this, you kind of see it as a divide by 2 pattern. Well, a divide by 2 is really the same thing as multiplying by a half. So this is a times a half, times a half, times a half, a half pattern. So remember, when you divide something, like if I want to divide 10 by 2, I put it over 2. You know, that's your 1 over 2. So a divide 2 pattern is the same as times a half. And so your ratio is a half. Because your ratio is always what you multiply by. And so if you see it going down, you're going to multiply by a fraction, which is basically division. Okay, and so we have an explicit formula. Remember the arithmetic one. The arithmetic formula was a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. And we kind of ended up with a linear equation from that. Um, so what's the similarities here? Well, we still have a sub n. It still starts with a sub 1, but now it's times r. And look at this. We see a base and an exponent. It's exponential. Um, so we a sub 1 times your rate raised to the n minus 1. So you still have an n minus 1, but instead of multiplying by something, it's the exponent. You know, remember the pattern for the arithmetic is the d. And it's your times your n minus 1. Your, par your pattern for the geometric is your r. That's the base of your exponential. And that's kind of what we were saying here again, that the pattern for a linear sequence and arithmetic sequence is the slope. You know, that's why it's, you know, there. But the pattern for a geometric sequence, a multiplication sequence, is the base. So keeping that in mind, 
let's, uh, I mean, you can follow this example right here, but let's try one down here. Find the seventh term. So find the seventh term automatically means n equals seven. If we're finding the seventh term, n is seven. We're finding eighth term, n is eight. We're finding the 20th term, n is 20. So we need n, we also need ace of one, and ace of one is just simply your first term. In this case, it's three. And then the last time we needed a d, this time we need an r, right? For arithmetic, we need d. For geometric, we need r. For linear, we need d. For exponential, we need r. So what is the pattern? And I think you can pretty clearly see this is a times two pattern, times two pattern. So the ratio is two. So using the Explicit formula for geometric sequence up there. Again, this formula, like the arithmetic sequence, these both given to you will look like this. So the seventh term, a sub 7, equals your first term, a sub 1, 3, parentheses your rate, 2, raised to the n minus 1, raised to the 7 minus 1. This will work out to be 3 times 2 to the 6th. 3 times, you know, what is 2 to the 6th? Well, let's see. Uh, 2 to the two squared is 4. 2 to the 3rd is 8. 2 to the 4th is 16. 2 to the 5th is 32. 2 to the 6th, I believe, is 64. 2 to the 6th is 64. Let me get my calculator out. I'm not going to bother to put it on the screen. You could just do it yourself. But 2 to the 6th, just to confirm, yes, it is 64. And 3 times that 64, then, is 192. And the numbers do get larger faster in the geometric sequence. Remember, the graph grows pretty rapidly because you're multiplying, not adding. So 192 is the seventh term here. And if we continue this pattern of times two, uh, times two, times two, we'll get to 192. Creating the general formula is basically doing the same thing we did up here where we have a sub one is three and we have r is two, but we're gonna leave n minus one as, we're gonna leave n as n. And so the generic formula here is just going to be a sub n, because we're not looking for a specific term, is 3 times 2 raised to the n minus 1. And we're going to leave it like that. There is something you can do to deal with that, but that's more of an algebra 2 concept, so we're going to stop it right there and leave it like that. All right, so that's, that's a geometric sequence. It's basically you know, the same type of stuff as the arithmetic sequence as far as the process goes, you know, looking for the pattern. Instead of an, a D, we have an R. You know, and it's a, a multiplication pattern instead of an addition pattern. And the formula, which again, given to you, you know, here we needed an A sub 1, a D, and an N. Well, now we need an A sub 1, an R, and an N. You know, and still just kind of plugging it in and uh, following the algebra rules, and uh, it's not too bad. But one of the biggest difference, biggest concepts here is recognizing the difference between these two sequences. And ultimately, it still comes back to this. And remembering that the pattern is really your slope. And the pattern here is really your base. All right, so that's it for um, geometric sequences. In the next video, we'll talk about 9-9 recursive sequences. But we'll save that for the next one. See you.